Hi, everyone, and thank you for tuning into the season one finale of the Real Heroes Don't Wear Capes podcast. I'm Stephanie Carter here with Crystal Sutherland and Michael Weens from the HS Heroes team. And today we're going to be speaking about our highlights from the year and our hopes for the future. So why don't we just jump in with what what is your most memorable moment of the year, guys? What's your highlight of this year? Uh, I guess I can take that. Um, for me, it's definitely Shisha which is these, oh, do I know what it stands for? The Symposium of Advancements of Hydrodinitis Superativa, I believe. Symposium on Hydrodinitis Superativa Advancements. Okay, yeah, my dyslexia kicked in there. That's the one, thank you. You had it, you had it, just out of order a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, okay, I was close, half point. But I just, that um, that three days, I think it it changed my life. I'm never, ever going to forget it. It left me feeling so hopeful and empowered and and really like a there there's so much happening with this condition there's a lot of incredibly smart gifted people trying to help us as patients and like that that excites me that gives me hope that's got to be my highlight um well, there was a lot uh, that uh, we should all be proud of this year, but I think one of my highlights was being able to attend virtually um, the skin summits and the indigenous summits. And I feel that there's so much being done um, moving forward with the work. And it's just really amazing to see so many folks across Canada, like join forces to try and make this a more inclusive um, dermatology in general, more inclusive for everyone. And that kind of work is so groundbreaking and needed right now. So I would say that was probably one of my biggest highlights of the year. What about you, Steph? For me, I agree with Michael. Shisha was for sure a highlight, but I think the thing that stands out most for me this year was awareness week and just how many things we were able to get lit purple across Canada this year from coast to coast, BC to Newfoundland. There's, there's just, you know, an incredible wave of awareness that happens in Canada. And I'm really proud of our group and the other groups who participate. And it's not just little things that were lit. It's like national, international, like the CN tower. Everyone knows the CN tower. It was, oh yeah, that was incredible. Niagara Falls is a big one too. This year when we went to Niagara Falls, it was so rainy that like you always kind of get a little damp when you go to the falls because of the condensation that rise out of it. But it was pouring when we went this year. It, you also, guys, didn't you tell me you couldn't see that it was purple? And I was like watching yeah. on the live stream and I'm like, it's purple. It's purple. Yeah. It really didn't look that no. way. So in 2021, when it lit purple, it was more of a pinkish purple. So it was really like, oh, okay, that's purple. But when it went purple this year, it was a, like a cool purple. So it looked blue or white and we weren't sure what was going on. And it wasn't until later when we looked at pictures we took while it was that color that we realized, oh, it's purple. <laughs> because yeah, it- the naked eye, it looked just white. Yeah, I had photos where it was very obvious as I think we've posted photos and yeah, but it it did not look it at all in person. Yeah, it it looked on the live screen. It was like yeah. I was like, no, no, it because you were like, I don't even think it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> but it did work. We just were looking right at it and still somehow missed it. And let's be <laughs> honest, you guys got drenched. It looked like you went on like a log ride or something you know <laughs> when we were walking to the falls I was like oh I don't want to step in any puddles I don't want to get my shoes wet <laughs> and then when we were leaving I was walking like right through them because I was soaked to the bone <laughs> I just yeah. trudged right through like ankle deep puddles because there was no getting any wetter than I already was that that, that was the most damp I have been in many years <laughs> now like I- I'm a but it, but it was an incredible evening, regardless of the yeah. raid. It was so cool. I Now, I'm like, I'm a 32-year-old woman, and I have never been so grateful for my mom saying, bring an extra pair of shoes with you. And I was like, I don't need extra shoes. I needed those extra shoes, or I was going to be soaked getting home. Uh, 
I, think I really like this CN oh. Tower night as well. We had a big turnout for the CN Tower night. There was, you know, Michael and I were there. The Hydradnitis and me team were there. And something really special about that night is when we were standing there taking pictures with the purple CN Tower, someone happened to walk by and see our signs and was like, hey, I have HS. And I was just talking about how I don't know anyone else who has it. And I felt so alone. And then I saw you guys. And so that was a really special moment from Awareness Week for us. I had forgotten about her. Yeah, that was really neat. I I think another thing that was really cool about like how this whole podcast came to be was, you know, we started out with a shot in the dark and, uh, we we had no idea what we were doing. We still don't have any idea what we're doing. But, you know, we just asked some of these specialists and some of these doctors if they would volunteer their time and come on here. And the response we got and the, you know, the folks that came on and the specialists and the doctors and the nurses and everyone and the patients was fantastic. And, you know, that was another really great accomplishment because we had no idea if this was going to take off or not. Yeah. So who was your, you know, most memorable guest that we had on or does something one of our guests said stand out to you guys as, as being most memorable to you? For me, I'd have to go with, I think, Dr. George. I, that, that was a really moving conversation for me. Just, it, it really sort of, you, you could see his, his humanity. I, I, I thought that was kind of special. I would, I would agree. Something that stands out a lot for me was from Dr. George's episode when he talked about how in oncology bedside manner is taught because I think a lot of people struggle with bedside manner of doctors who aren't taught that in school. And they can, even though they care a lot, they can appear, you know, cold or disinterested when they're really not. So I just, I thought that was really, really interesting to know that that's kind of why certain doctors are like that and others aren't. For me, I think um, having Lasha on, I know Mike wasn't there for that episode, but um, just hearing her story and like everything that she went through and overcame and, you know, seeing her thriving now was really inspirational to so many, I think. And uh, I think that was my, one of my favorite episodes. Lasha also did um, a video for Awareness Week where she kind of goes into detail about her story. So if anybody was interested, you can go and check that out on our YouTube page or on our website. Yeah, and that was really, really good and emotional. I I definitely tear up every time I read or rewatch it. I also really like Dr. Chikini's and now I know I'm a little biased because that's my dermatologist, but I thought kind of of everyone we spoke to, his interest in dermatology kind of came from a personal experience with struggling with eczema and having severe eczema as a kid and growing up. So I thought that was, you know, really interesting. And you can kind of understand why why he's taken such a passionate, you know, interest in helping people with skin skin conditions. Crystal, you mentioned you went to, you know, the skin summit and the indigenous skin uh, summit. Yeah. Uh, what's something that stands out from those conferences that that you'd like people to know or would like to pass on? Um, well, I think one of the one of the um coolest things they're doing right now is they're rescaling the Fitzpatrick scale, which is what measures melanin in skin to include more um diverse um sections of color of skin. And also you know, COVID, you know, really put a dent in a lot of things. But one thing I found from this conference was it, you know, with so many folks being at home, it really created a lot of databases that have medical pictures of um, people of all different skin types that they can use to show as examples um, of what erythema is, because it presents, you know, in, you um, light melanin skin so much different than it does in darker melanin skin it almost comes out like a bruise and so these are a lot of things like gps you know aren't even familiar with so to me it's really great that you know out of something so 
tragic that we're still going through, um, that these data banks have been able to be made and that these resources are there for dermatologists all across Canada. Just to touch on that, um, one of the summits that I had gone to, not this year, but they did talk about, I think, eczema specifically on, you know, melanated skin versus, you know, uh, not as melanated skin, like white skin. And on, on my skin, I was talking to Jasmine at the SHSA conference. We both have eczema and I, we both have it on our hands and we were just showing it to each other. And mine was red and they were both irritated, but hers appeared as darker patches on her skin, whereas mine appeared as red patches on my skin. And a lot of time that gets looked over, right? Because people always think red angry, but they don't really realize that it presents differently on different colors of skin. I also thought it was really great how, you know, a lot of the work that's being done from um, Origins Dermatology and how Rachel is going up uh, you know, into remote areas and bringing dermatology up there. And I find that's very, very interesting. And I look forward to hearing more about her work this year when we go in the summer. We also talked to Dr. Keeling, who who Crystal originally told us was getting his pilot's license, but we talked about it briefly on his episode that he was getting his license so he could travel into Northern communities to help treat people who don't have access to dermatology. Yeah, I thought that was, speaking of, yeah, showing one's humanity, that too, uh, definitely. He was so filled with compassion as well. We We really have been fortunate in our guests. Yeah, we're really lucky um, right now. But I mean, I don't like healthcare in Canada is like on the line right now. And we, you know, we I think that folks don't realize how lucky we are to have a public access healthcare system in Canada. And I know it's something that I advocate for every day to continue to keep public health care public because I know that all, you know, you both have seen the GoFundMes in the States. I mean, we've seen at Shisha before it being said, if you don't have the first, one of the first questions before getting medical treatment is, do you have in insurance? Because if you don't, we can't take care of you because this is a multiple visit, um, you know, HS is a multiple visit situation that sometimes takes years. And I know that if I lived in the States and I didn't have insurance, I don't know if I'd have a roof over my head. So I think, you know, us also advocating to keep public health care public is something that's really important to all of us at HS Heroes and is something we're really going to be working on more in 2023 and uh, getting that kind of advocacy out there. For sure, yeah. Because, yeah, no, it's getting scary. It seems like every day you hear about some other program being chopped in some province or every province. And yeah, agreed. So what about like you guys on a personal level, not necessarily HS Heroes related? What's something, you know, good that happened to you this year? Don't know if I'm equipped to really handle that because this is one of my roughest years ever. Well, you did some traveling this year. That is true. I mean, I, I again, did that, well, I didn't want to mention it again, but yeah, I know Miami... Uh, that was so many filled with so many firsts. My first palm tree to tropical climate to professional conference. Uh, again, yeah, no, it was it was amazing. The only complaint I have about Miami is how hot and humid it was. <laughs> my HS was not happy with me when I got home, and I flared a little bit after Miami. What about you, Mike? Oh no. Uh, I did as well. And I know the ladies in Hydronitis and me, uh, they two, if not all three, flared as well there. So yeah, the, the heat certainly did some damage. Yeah, I think it was, you know, heat and travel stress. Well, you guys walked like for hours and hours and hours. That's a lot of friction sometimes. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, my kilometer count or my step count was unlike anything I had ever seen. So you know how sometimes they have those big like 
futuristic like circle scanning things in airports. So I've talked about on past episodes how I have uh, an ostomy. So when I go through that, it always picks it up on on the scans. And I guess Miami is a high drug, high weapons trafficking airport. So instead of being able to just kind of (laughs) check it out (laughs) over my clothes, they had to take me into like a whole room and they were leading me away in my socks. And Michael was watching going like, what is happening? But once they knew it was a medical device, they were so, so nice. (laughs) And it was like so easy and gentle. But all I remember seeing Michael looking at me like, what's going on? As I was getting led away by security. Oh, yeah, I just, uh, there's one on either side of you, <laughs> all in step, as you say, and you were in your socks. It yeah. was just like, see, I, uh, I'm glad you came back. <laughs> they were so super nice once they realized, like, I told them it was like a medical device. And then they were so, you know, kind and gentle with me after that. They weren't like forceful, but they, when it first happened, they were like being very stern with me. And I was like, oh, I'm like a Canadian. I don't do like, I was like so worried about it. But then as as soon as I was like, it's like, it's a medical device. They were like, oh, okay, let's go to a private room. Like, it's going to be fine. Like, and they were, they were so, so nice about it. But it was just like really funny to me to like turn and see Michael's face and him being like, what's going on? Oh, I think my eyes did like the cartoon. (laughs) When I saw you, oh, I was concerned. Uh, It was like, you know, in hindsight, it was really funny. In the like moment, I was like, what's going on? It was just, I wasn't never scared. I was just very confused. (laughs) But then after I I thought it was hilarious. I was scared for you. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, what are they going to find? Like, like some like ostomy adhesive? (laughs) I don't know, but I was still just seeing you, you know, the security looked very serious as you were being led away and. They were super nice once I got in there. One of the women was like, oh, like if I want to go to Canada, like what time of year should I go? And I was like, well, do you like, what kind of weather do you want? Fall weather with the different color leaves? She's like, no, no. Like I want it to be hot. <laughs> it's like, oh, go in July, go to Ontario in July. <laughs> we get those gross, humid, hot days in, in Ontario, unfortunately. Oh, yes. Uh... I guess if you live in Miami, you're probably going to like the heat. Every time we saw a bald man in Miami, Michael was like, is that Pitbull? <laughs> I was like, no, Michael. You never know. I, I, I mean, you no, no, it had to be a well-dressed bald man. <laughs> There was a man, we were walking out of a CVS pharmacy because we were both in so much pain. We wanted to get like Voltaren <laughs> and we were walking out and a man was walking and he's like, is that Pipple? I'm like, no, I don't think Pipple shops at CVS pharmacy. <laughs> you never know when he needs some band-aids. <laughs> uh, Crystal's done a lot of advocacy this year. Do you have uh, like a protest that stands out for you? You also became friends with Janice this year after manifesting it last year uh, she also won a big award yeah yeah my medal <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah maybe, maybe I was... talk about that yeah oh uh, well I was uh nominated for the pl- the platinum the queen what is it called the queen platinum queen jubilee platinum medal jubilee medal yeah um which was a huge honor and surprise um by uh an MLA that I volunteer with Janice Irwin so that was really amazing for the work that we've accomplished with the with HS in Alberta and um one of I think one of my favorite protests that I've gone to well I on Saturday I went out for the um Inter, uh, International Day of Dis- World Disability and um, stood with other um, advocates uh, to, you know, fight for disability rights and disability awareness. So that was um, really good. And uh, a, a lot of times, you know, folks share their personal stories and we always say how powerful stories are. So, you know, sometimes some of the things is like really hard to hear but it just uh makes you realize how fortunate you are and it's very humbling and it's just nice to be you know lend a body in solidarity to be out there with folks like that so that was a really good one for me um 
I went out to, to fight for saving Canadian uh, veins uh, last week as well, and it was minus 40. So that was probably one of the coldest, most uncomfortable ones I've been to. But there's been a there's been a lot. I just feel sometimes, you know, it's I'm privileged enough that I can be uncomfortable to help uplift other people's um, to help just lift up other people. Could you um could you talk about the thing that happened with insulin in Alberta and how, you know, patient voices really like changed the tide on that? Um, yeah, this year they decided to go after um people who were uh, type one diabetic on the insulin pump program. And yeah, like everybody that's a healthcare advocate, a lot of the nurses unions, and um, we all came together and we rallied to help save the um, pump. And we really put the pressure on the UCP government in Alberta and they took it back and decided that they were going to cover it. So, you know, it, a lot of times people think these policies can't be reversed, but when the people really come together and um, the government's forced to listen, because we have to remember, we're the ones that elect these folks to do the job they're doing, and they really should be working for us and to be putting the people first before profits. And I really wish that, you know, we, you know, the year they came for the medical switch in Alberta, I really wish that, uh, you know, COVID had just hit, everybody was, you know, staying home to help save lives. And we, you know, we didn't have the opportunity to be able to fight back against and raise concerns. And so, you know, the whole reason I really got involved in this is because if they want to come in other provinces for medications or they want to come for another HS medication for us again, I now have the tools and um, that I can share so that we can actually fight back. And so that is really where my activism in the community began. They say sometimes you don't get angry until it, you know, something affects you. And when they came for that medication, it really made me angry. And I just wanted to do something about it. The world would be better if there were more use. Hey, I'm not the only one. There's a lot of us. It just, uh, I, you know, I, I had no idea what I was doing with that either. And you, you just kind of start making connections and friends. And now I feel like I go out there and I'm like, Hey, everybody, but it's, it's good because these tools we'll be able to use in the future to protect ourselves. Right. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I always want to know what I can do to protect HS patients in Canada. So what about this, like coming up here? Like we know what the dates are going to be for, you know, awareness week, 2023 um we know we're going to be lighting stuff up again we will be getting the proclamations and i think there's a walk in the works coming up i mean not to mention you know we're going to have season two of this and uh we can't be giving out any spoilers on what we've got coming up but i mean we've got some really great stuff planned in the works and uh i i know i'm excited for next year i think it's going to be the best year we ever had what about you two? I'm excited. And hey, if you're, you know, listening or watching and you have an idea for maybe a video you'd like to see during Awareness Week or a topic you'd like to see covered in the podcast, a guest you'd like to see, send us an email at info at hsheroes.ca or you can uh, direct message us on Twitter, Try Instagram, or Facebook. <laughs> yeah, just slide into those DMs. <laughs> So what are you guys, what are you both looking forward to next year? What's your Phoenix? At least it's dry heat. <laughs> Coming to see me. <laughs> I'm excited to get together as a group since we've started HS Heroes. Michael and I are able to see each other because we're both in Ontario, but it's, it's literally been like three years since we've seen Crystal. The last time I saw her was in 2019. So I'm excited to actually get together in person. I saw you in 2019 in Toronto, Michael, remember when we? Yes, but I think yeah. Steph seen you after. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been way too damn long. Agreed. Last time I saw Crystal was at her wedding when, in 2019. 
I know. And I've been married for three years now. So, <laughs> oh, I, I'm excited to see you guys. I can't wait. I think that's going to be like my big highlight for next year. I want to take you to the mountains. I want to get a couple projects done while you're here. And I think it'll be really good. Like we, I want to, you know, reach out to Dr. Lamb and Dr. Pullman and let's get ourselves a little tour of their operations and, you know, just check out, just check out their clinic and see what's going on there. And what, uh, you know, Dr. Pullman has planned for next year, being the head of the Canadian HS foundation. I'm curious to pick her brain about that as well. Definitely. Yeah. Ah, I've never seen a real mountain. Uh, that's going to be one more thing on a bucket list. I don't think I have. Well, I mean, I've seen like the mountainous areas of Newfoundland, but I've never. Oh, you know what? That's a total lie. I've been to Vancouver. I've seen the mountains, <laughs> but you know where the, the best place to see them from is like the airports. <laughs> like when you're unless you're going to them, the best place to get like a visual of them was from the airport. So that's the only time I ever saw them. Uh, the best place to see them is going on one of the gondolas. So we're going to change that opinion of the yeah. airport view. Ooh, my heart just went gondola. <laughs> okay, we can work on that. They're With cool. enough weed, nothing seems real. They fit like a bunch of people. So it's like a bus going up a thing. So you're not, I've seen the smaller ones, but yeah, I'm not into the smaller ones either. I've, I've been on a smaller one in Quebec City. My father and I rode it to the top of a waterfall. Yeah. Beautiful view, but it was spooky. Yeah. They used to have one at Disneyland that like went across that was just like, and it was like very high and scary. Yeah. I want to get you in Ontario at some point and like we can go check out Niagara Falls maybe for a lighting one year and and like check out all the kitschy stuff in Niagara because like they have some of the worst best wax museums in Niagara Falls if you google I've, it it's just they're horrendous but they're so fun I've never been to one but uh I, I've heard I have heard that as well yeah they're have, terrible but they're they're a lot of fun <laughs> it's just have like you seen stuff have you seen that what they do at the sea and tower where they like clip people onto like a vest and then they hang off the side like no nope, I'm not doing not that. Nope. pay yeah, me nope. enough nope when I was little my parents took me and my younger brother up this the entire cost like it costed like 60 dollars and this was like 20 years ago and uh when you get up there they have glass floors and I did not know how afraid of heights I was until I was about to step onto a glass floor of the CN Tower and I almost started crying and then my dad freaking pushed me onto the glass floor and I panicked and I had to sit down and crawl my way back off of it because I was like my legs started shaking so bad I didn't I did not know I was afraid of heights until that moment yeah it's scary they have one in the Calgary one as well can't do it the glass floor can't I, do the I, glass floor really can't do the overhanging like out in the open CN Tower walk I'm pretty sure there's like a big like one of the mountain spots by me there's like a big glass like bridge you can walk over which I don't know if I'm sure about that either no that's why I said Niagara we can go on the boat we can go and look at the falls but stay safely planted on some <laughs> form of <laughs> ground nowhere in there I want to go on that ship that was in that Jim Carrey movie where they're all like yeah. wearing those plastic bags and just gets like soaked. It's all <laughs> made of the mist. Yes. <laughs> so it's, good. It's brutal. It's like standing in a rainstorm. It would have been like standing where we were on the night that the falls lit up this year for awareness week. It's so <laughs> damp. So you wet. Those crappy ponchos or you're getting soaked. They used to have way better like raincoats. Like it would actually be like a raincoat that would button up in the front, like little snaps in the front. And now it's just like a plastic bag. Oh, I th you don't get the yellow ones anymore? That was famous. No, you still get the yellow ones, but they're like, they're basically just a trash bag that goes over your head with like a hole in it, right? They used to have oh. like actual coats. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's sad. 
but I'm sure they realized that was not cost effective because people weren't giving them back. And I could tell you they're not giving them back because I have two in my basement. <laughs> so, people like you. <laughs> Way to go, Stephanie. <laughs> uh, any police officer, she's kidding. Yeah. I think the statute of limitations on that is up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> in like decades okay yeah you're probably safe they're not gonna come for you for raincoats that's for sure <laughs> we think uh before we sign off do you guys have any you know parting words for this season of the podcast um i think i just like to thank every uh person who uh came, all of our guests who came on um this year and donated their time and their energy um to support us in support of patients and i'm really excited for what we have planned for next year i'll maybe go down that same avenue slightly and i'd like to thank anyone out there who's uh actually listening to us you're you're making it possible for us to uh keep doing this and hopefully educating people, raising awareness. That's kind of why we're here. So yeah, thank you audience, wherever you are. I'd like to just echo what both of you said. Thank you for listening. I hope that you found these informative and educational and you know helpful. That's why we do them. The reason we started HS Heroes was to be able to help people. And we think that, you know, with all our you know, fantastic guests that came on this year. We've really been able to make a, a broad push of education. Uh, so uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope to see you in the new year for season two of the HS Heroes podcast. And until then, remember, real heroes don't wear capes. Oh.